this is terrifying. <laughs> Driving up into the mountains on these little winding roads, gravel, and then yet you can't really see much because the fog is so thick out here. We're still exploring Iceland, and one of the best ways of appreciating its diverse landscape is to travel the Ring Road, Iceland's principal route that encircles the country connecting its far-flung cities. We've left Reykjavik and headed out exploring. As you venture out, you'll come across a host of animals, either on the side of the roads or in the road itself, so drive cautiously. Located a few hours southeast of Reykjavik is the town of Vik. Well, welcome to Iceland. We are now doing the Ring Road. We checked out this RV a few days ago back in Reykjavik. And so we've kind of been making our way southeast. Uh, today we are heading to the town of Vik. We just finished here at this campsite. This is probably our third campsite that we visited so far. Pretty rugged. Bordered by rolling green hills and black sand beaches, Vik is a popular day trip destination for visitors short on time and looking for an escape from the city. Adjacent to Vik is Reynes Fajara Beach with its towering basalt columns and caves. Another spot worth a visit is Seljan Lan Sofos, located in the Rengaparang Estera, an area west of Vik. This is one of the few waterfalls in Iceland where you can go behind the waterfalls. It's incredibly wet here, so dress comfortably, preferably something water repellent. We're back out on the ring road heading northeast to Seydish Fujora, but we're going to make a short stop. So we're making a quick pit stop at Diamond Beach. This is the, one of the lagoons that's adjacent to it. Uh, it's, you're here you can take glacier tours going out onto uh, the harbor. So right across from that glacier lagoon that we just looked at where all of the ice, the uh, giant ice blocks and uh, icebergs that were floating around is this place. This is Diamond Beach because up and down the shore you're going to find large chunks of ice that look almost like a diamond. So we finally have made it to our next campground. Uh, this one's like surrounded right in the mountains with horses over here in the prairie next to us. Uh, the woman who checked us in, uh, she didn't speak any English. She had her, I guess her son, her grandson, a little kid, and he did the translating for her. So how has it been living in a small RV? It's actually not that bad. We've been able to cut down on our costs as Iceland is a very expensive place to eat out by preparing many of our own meals. After our detours, we've made it to Se Fajora, Iceland's port for departing ferries to continental Europe. It's also a day stop for cruise ships. Welcome to a new campsite. We are in Se Fjord. Uh, learned how to kind of say it earlier today. So we've settled in. 
It's hard to believe it's almost 10 o'clock. <laughs> you couldn't tell looking at the sky, but it's almost 10 o'clock, midnight sun. So this is the spot where, as I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to go over to Europe, there are ferries that leave from here, not every day, but every couple of days they leave from here and they'll travel over to Denmark. We settled in uh, for the night, just doing some laundry, getting situated and getting ready. Tomorrow we'll head to Akaruri, uh, and then we'll be there for a few days and then we will start heading, making our journey back to Reykjavik. We're now heading northwest towards Akaruri, Iceland's second largest city. On the way there, we make two short stops. Our first stop is Mivat Nature Baths. It's similar to the Blue Lagoon, like but sulfur. more natural. <laughs> Look at your view, though. You can actually smell the sulfur here in the air. Up the road a little bit is Hiver. So making a little pit stop, looks like the area we are at is Hever. Is that how you say it? I know I'm saying it wrong. You know, we could stand in front of the side. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like it's a geothermal area. It looks more like something from another planet. Welcome to Akuri. With a population of around 19,000 people, this small coastal city lies at the end of Iceland fjords and will be our jumping off spot for the next couple of days. One item on our list of things to do is whale watching. After having looked through our guidebook, one recommendation for seeing them is to go to the town of Husavik. So we're heading that way. Husavik is a former whale hunting hub and now is the epicenter for whale watching. Welcome to Husavik. Hopefully I'm saying that name right. We have, after some juggling and finding a parking spot and rearranging our tickets, we are here to go whale watching. And actually this is one of the best spots in all of Iceland to do so. You'll find that in other cities they have an opportunity to go whale watching, but this is rumored to be the best spot. So I'll let you know if that's true. After boarding, we're given overalls to keep us warm once we set out to sea. It doesn't take long into our journey before we begin seeing whales. How many did we see? I'm not certain as I lost track after seeing so many. But Husavik is definitely worth a visit. After 10 days of being out on the road, we're concluding our adventure by heading back towards Reykjavik. We're going to make one last detour before reaching the city. Since Iceland is so volcanic, one of the things that definitely recommend is a visiting uh, a lava field somewhere along your route and so we're just a little bit outside of uh, in midway between Akuri and uh, Reykjavik. Reykjavik. Welcome to Grabra Crater. It's more than 170 meters or 558 feet from the top of the crater to the parking lot below. Walk carefully as there are no railings here. The view from the top is definitely worth the trek. Well, nearly after two weeks of traveling around Iceland, we have come to the end of our trip. We've made it back to Reykjavik and we are preparing 
to start heading out to Ireland just kind of enjoying these last few minutes here in the city. I think this is a beautiful country. I really enjoyed all the big forms of nature, the landscapes and seeing uh, the mountains, the ridges, the waterfalls, so many waterfalls and just taking it all in. I don't really have a whole lot to say. It's just, I think there's a lot more that we could have explored, but I'm really happy with what we did get to see. It's amazing. If you've enjoyed this vlog, press the like button and subscribe to this channel to continue receiving our travel tips.